Welcome to the Glenn Beck Program. Happy birthday, $787 billion stimulus package. Happy birthday to you. Oh, it's been a fabulous year. I'm still counting all of the jobs. The $787 billion stimulus package created or saved. Now, it's kind of like a surprise. We've been saving it for you. Nobody in the media even, even bothered to notice this. Do you remember when we all freaked out a year ago about $787 billion and we're like, ah, oh, no. Yeah. Well, the good folks at the Obama administration knew how much you loved cake. So they took the 787 and they added another 75 billion right to the top of the cake. Happy birthday, what's left of America. Happy birthday to you. my phone. The phone could ring at any time. It's that kind of show today. Hello, America. I would like to rewind the clock to, I don't know, about a year ago. America needed a stimulus package. We couldn't live without it. And this is what our fearless leader was telling us back then. A failure to act quickly can only lead to more job losses and more economic pain for Americans. I don't believe it's too late to change course, but it will be if we don't take dramatic action as soon as possible. If nothing is done, this recession could linger for years. For years. The unemployment rate could reach double digits. Whoa. The situation could not be more serious. Mm. It's time to pass an economic recovery and reinvestment plan right to get on. our economy moving. Yes. This yes. is about getting this out and spent in 18 months to create 3.5 million jobs and to, uh, to set, tee this up so the rest of the good work that's being done here li li literally drop kicks us out of this recession and we begin to grow again. I see what you mean. We've got to get it into the system immediately or we may never recover. <laughs> yes, America may not recover if we didn't borrow more money from places like China and then recklessly spend it. No, oh, how's the plan working out for us now? Well, Joe Biden had this glowing review of the stimulus package. So this act, along with a lot of everything else we did, helped us avoid a depression. It also succeeded in saving and creating two million jobs so far. It was designed to have two stages to it. Uh, we've only been halfway through the act. Uh, the job creating portions are really loaded at the second half here in the major projects that are going to be being built. Um, but yes, they have gotten their money for it. Did I hear him right? Did he, did he say there were two stages to this and the job creation part is really for the back half of it? <laughs> What, 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 what was the first stage for? I mean, it, just to waste money? Uh, I mean, I don't know. I, did you know that? Huh. Well, it's a good thing to hear that they didn't really work on the job creation thing in the first part of the stimulus package because unemployment has gone from 8.2% to 97 So I'm glad to know that there's just no intent on actually creating jobs in the first part. It's the second part. Can I ask you this question? Was there any intent to restore the economy in the first part? Because that's not working either. Maybe that maybe it could be in the third part. I don't know. What was the intent of the first half of the stimulus stimulus package? Because we we now owe 1.6 trillion dollars more today than we did a year ago. So Joe, you're right. Um, that's good stuff. I can't tell you how many people I know that have jobs now because it was saved or created by the stimulus. I, if I had a dollar for every time I ran into somebody who said, you know, my job was saved or created by the stimulus package, well, I die. I die. <clears throat> oh, here's the president offering his assessment today. Businesses are the true engines of growth. Wait a minute, what? Businesses are the engines of job creation in this country. Hold it, I... I thought you hated business. Oh, that, that was the first phase of this. Hate business, now you love business. Government can't restore the economy. 
weird because it was about a year ago when he told America this. The federal government is the only entity left with the resources to jolt our economy back into life. Mm -hmm. But now that it's not working, he seems to be playing a different tune. If it's a failure, well, not his fault. It was, they did everything they could, you know what I'm saying? Valerie Jarrett trocked up any kind of bad rap the stimulus package has over PR struggles. She said, quote, it's just so hard to get out the positive news stories when people tend to focus on what's going wrong as opposed to what's going so well. She also added the administration has not done a good enough job explaining how the plan has helped people. I can't take it anymore. Mr. President, Valerie Jarrett, we can hear you, the American people can hear you. And the people who have been doing this to our economy for like the last year or so, oh, you're about to hear from the American people very, very clearly. Vote. <laughs> Valerie, let me explain it this way. Let's say you broke your leg. You go to the hospital, okay? He sets your leg. And you're like, hey, I'm walking around, I'm feeling good. You don't need the doctor to say, you don't have a broken leg anymore. See, you're fine. No, no, no. Only time that happens is when you're like, hey, doc, ow. That's when the doctor says, no, you don't have a broken leg. I don't know what you're talking about. If you're feeling fine. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. It's not working. In fact, it's working so poorly that polls show, watch this, shows pull this, or polls show this. People who think the stimulus work, 6%. Uh, just note to the White House, I don't think I have to uh, explain that number to you. I think that just kind of stands there on itself, 6%. But if you do need an explanation, let me show you this. Number of people who think Elvis is still alive. Seven. By the way, you don't seem to be very good at math at the White House. That's a bigger number. By the way, for anybody who really does think Elvis is still alive, I think you would probably have to guess that he looks a little something like this right now. And now there's about 7% of the American population. I saw Elvis's picture on TV. He's wearing like a jumper. Yes, yes. And I also heard the stimulus package is working. That's how much of a disaster this thing is. I mean, Joe Biden is in charge of it. I mean, who? Only about a third of the stimulus money has been sent, uh, been spent, and I, I have a hard time because I thought it was an emergency. But anywho, what about the lucky people who actually got money? Okay, who are they? I would like to point out one lucky recipient: Serious Windows, this guy's company over here. It's a small window manufacturer. Now, why do I have her on the other side? It's a strange, completely unrelated coincidence. The VP of policy for Sirius Windows happens to be married to her. She's Obama's weatherization czar. <laughs> this is, what a small world. <laughs> now, many of the places that received money, uh, money from the stimulus package were schools that were struggling. Money's dried up now and they're broke again. Hmm. I think we talked about that last year and predicted this would happen. This wasn't about creating jobs. None have been created. All they did was prolong the inevitable and in the process wasted your money and put you and your children behind the eight ball even more. But that's not stopping the White House from saying it saved us from another Great Depression. Wait a minute, I thought that was TARP. I mean, was it the $787 billion stimulus package or the $75 billion that you added to it or the $700 billion of George W. Bush that you hate but yet you you claim is yours. I mean, it's, we're talking over $2 trillion now. I, I'm confused. I just don't know. America, nobody's going to tell you the truth. I mean, you knew before they even announced it. You knew this was wrong. I was actually dumb enough to go along with it for about three days. It's some form of TARP. TARP is what I was actually for before they named it and started actually debating it in Congress. And the reason was you can't hold off a collapse. We're going to have to pay the piper, but you can hold it off a while. 
It gives you time to wake people up, to help them prepare. Everybody was still drunk and at a party. Look at the difference between the American people then and now. Well, I was against it about, I think by Wednesday of that week that they were talking about TARP because I realized that's not what they were doing. Bush was using it to convince us that they could fix everything and it'd be just dandy. That's what Obama is doing too. We've, we've avoided the Great Depression. Really? Really?